very happy this is out. This is, um, yeah, a long time in the coming. Uh, it's obviously 350. Holy shit. Pages. Yeah, it's uh, this is soft cover. We got a hard cover too. You know, in the announcement, we didn't say how much it's, I, I we should put that in. It's 30 bucks, like 29.95 for the soft and 39.95 for the hard. So, um, but yeah, it's like, it's got, you know, I mean, I can't really do it justice here on the video. <laughs> it's all color, glossy, like, you know, a zillion pictures in it. Um, I mean, it just, it goes over so much. Um, so, you know, I mean, how, it's, how long did it take you guys to, uh, get that thing put together from start to end? How long you guys been working on that? Um, for, it, it was, it was about six years and it was really just me wow. sitting home writing. Yeah. It was, wow. it was just. Um, I started, I think I started working on it, um, winter of 15, I want to say, and, you know, we're going chunks and spurts, but it was like, basically got like the general concept together. Cause I'd always thought about writing a, a book on, uh, you know, uh, on CDC grading, of course, it's the pedigree book, which now more, you know, more than ever is going to be part of the conversation, but we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, you know, so the, the book was, you know, kind of always like a seed there and the timing, the timing was right. So I just started you know, I got an idea, you know, I started building on it and just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote for years and just kind of like was like, well, this will be done when it's done. And then eventually it finished about 18 months ago. And then um, I thought that was the hard part. It turned out to be the easy part because the next <laughs> 18 months was like the layouts, getting, oh. you know, gathering the pictures besides the ones I took of the comics, uh, getting approval for those pictures. Uh, getting all the printing lined up, the marketing, you know, all stuff like that. The final, all the touches, the final edits. Oh, my God. So, like, the past, you know, nine months have been just, you know, just plowing through this thing. Uh, and so, you know, the, we had, initially we were going to have a deadline of San Diego, uh, but we couldn't quite make it. So I thought, well, we got one more shot this year. It's New York. It's got to be New York. So uh, here we are. And, uh, yeah, so it's happening uh, next week what, on Thursday. What, what are some of the things that you are most proud about that's in this 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 guide that you have available for people i mean yeah. uh, that that's the important thing to me is i want to know from the guy who put it together what he's excited about putting in people's hands i mean i know there's certain things where you're probably like uh, how many times how many more times can i get asked about this that are in there <laughs> but 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 i want to know the things that you're proud of <laughs> well see this is the great part is that i didn't talk about the book until now so this is like these all these questions are new <laughs> they might be old <laughs> weeks i don't know but no the i think um the thing I'm most excited about that the book that I think it, I'm trying to accomplish with the book is that it's bridging a gap of knowledge that's formed uh, between the, the the collectors or just the community and CGC in particular, the standards, um, but also a lot of other things, how we um, identify things, uh, you know, they're just and then there's a lot of informative things like restoration check uh and 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 uh, evaluation for enhancement and things so so there's there's all these facets to it but there's a lot of nuances to it there's a lot of it's really dense it's really really dense and i think you know the point of it is is to convey all these nuances that i think people have not learned yet or maybe they don't know or they want to know and they don't you know and and so it's, it's trying to just close that gap and uh you know it's yeah because i feel like this is something that you know, was over 22 years has grown into like this really big thing. And um, and so now I think more than ever, it's important to get to kind of close that that gap between us and, and the community in terms of how we grade comic books, generally speaking, you know, but 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 the other thing is that I put everything in there I could everything I thought would be relevant to grading is in there. So <laughs> it is I, I, I'm not sure. I, I think I got every stone. I didn't think I left any. <laughs> We'll see. I, especially now with the influx of um, new collectors, and, and I mean, there's just been such a huge influx of people that are getting into, you know, collecting comics. Um, not not just reading comics, but a lot of new collectors. Uh, really, really important to teach these collectors, you know, the ins and outs, and and keep them uh, safe. And I think that these guides are probably one of the most important parts of that, especially coming from uh, a, a CGC grading who, you know, is kind of like on that, that top level of, of people that we look to, to get, you know, our, our trust for, you know, we trust CGC grading. We trust what you guys have to say, especially you, Matt. I mean, let's be honest. We, we were kind of talking before the, before the show, but you've had a long history in this game. You've been doing it since, you know, you're, you're a teenager. You, you know, we've talked for many interviews before about, you know, you growing up and working, you know, back in the days of Bill Ponsetti and, and, and being such a big part of this, 
you know, community. And, and I think it's great that you specifically, you spent a lot of time on doing that. So thank you for that. That's, that's, that's amazing. I can't wait to get into it and nerd out. And I can't and, either. And I don't know, like it's the emotion. It's a roller coaster ride for me because it's like, you know, I'm writing and I'm like, this is going to be awesome. And then, <laughs> and then it, and then it comes down to it. And I'm like, I'm like, I got the craps. I'm like scared. I'm like, Oh my God, what if this comes out? And like, it's a disaster. You know, it's like, I, you have no idea. I have no idea what to expect with this thing, but I think, you know, I, I think it's going to be, I think people will like it. We'll see. We'll see next week. You know, when they, when they pick it up, I, you know, it's uh, there's certainly going to be a lot of reading. There's <laughs> if they want information, it's going to be, you know, that's the book. There's going to be plenty of information to, uh, to digest. So uh, will it be available from CGC? Can you order it from there? Straight. Yeah. So here are the details. So uh, assuming that, you know, the shipment gets to the show. All right. And everything's fine, which is the last component. You know, again, it's been like this just crazy right up to the very end. So um, assuming that's all fine, everything's at the booth. And Thursday, I think officially they, they go on sale, I believe, around 11 a.m. Uh, we'll post the time. Um, but it's not going to go on sale uh, online until, I believe, Monday, right after the show. And we did that. I think it's, it's going to be through the CGC website. I think, um, um, what is the website called? I'll remember in a minute. But um, it's it basically wanted to kind of keep it separated because, uh, you know, if you, people do online, you know, they go and they buy it online and they show up at the show and they want to get it. And you got to like, you know, balance all that stuff. So there was a lot of like, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, moving parts, I guess, with mm -hmm. selling this thing because we've never done this before. So we're like, I'm like, look, let's just let's just put so we're only bringing a certain number of copies to the show and they sell out, they sell out and they don't find but, you know, we're just not going to intermingle the online sales. So when you when the show's over, then everybody go online and, uh, and order that. And then, like I said, hard car, uh, hard cover, soft cover, and, you know, we'll release details and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, after that, then it just, you know, just go and order it. Then we and ship it off to you. Got a little box for it and everything. So, nice. uh, yeah. So just us. And we'll just, yeah, we'll see how it goes again. I have no idea, you know, what to expect with the reaction or the sales or anything. It's, it's, yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, it's uh you know, it, it, we'll see what happens. Well, you know, there's been a, a couple of big things that uh, you guys have announced lately. Um, this being obviously a huge, it's it's the the freshest on everybody's mind. Um, and heading into New York, it's, it's it's a great thing to bring to New York, something new, something people are going to be looking for. It's exciting. But another thing that you guys recently announced that a lot of people are, of course, excited about um, is the new label changes. Uh, you guys are going to now start uh, differentiating between directs and newsstands, mm -hmm. um, which people have been asking for for a long time. And a <laughs> lot of people are excited. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, I felt like that was kind of a no brainer. You know, it's just a, it wasn't a matter of if it was a matter of when. And uh, and we uh, yeah, very excited to get that out, especially before New York. Um, we've been working on it the past, you know, like all these other things this whole year, um, working towards this, trying to build. You know, read just research and do a deep dive and, and really look at what's out there in the landscape. And it, it's fascinating, you know, what 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 is and what isn't. Um, and there's definitely some gray areas in there, at least some things that I think maybe had not even turned up yet. But regardless, you know, but yeah, we're putting on the label now. And so uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think the I think it's something that it, we, we, we've been meaning to. Or are, should, are, you, go ahead. are you guys going to um, also is, is there any talk or or thoughts of including things like mark jewelers or national diamond variants or these type of uh you know other things that can you know can be kind of added onto that label is there is there, is there a, a ways to expand it in the future or, or thoughts to expand you know what you're going to put on that do you mean like in, in conjunction with the new stem yeah oh it'll all be on the label yeah so so yeah. now mark jewelers and uh, will be on there newsstand and you'll differentiate oh, from all yeah. the yeah 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 you can have mark jewelers a, a national diamond sales insert a triple cover a, a, a newsstand edition with color touch i mean it'll all be on the label awesome <laughs> you know yeah awesome. yeah, the, yeah <laughs> the uh it'll all be on the label yeah um but yeah yeah uh the the newsstand is is a uh is treated kind of like a variant um, whereas the Mark Jewelers is actually like a label text note. So two different, two different fields, mm. um, the label text is in the middle and that's usually where like, uh, inserts, double covers, restorations, things like that. Going. Um, you know, but yeah, the, the, the new stand will be over on the side, like a, like a very hard pedigree. Yeah. Uh, you guys ready for the influx of, of reholders you guys are going to be getting? <laughs> 
from I all am, the high yeah. grade. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna yeah, be really, crazy, man. Yeah, it's yeah, it's there's definitely a lot to reholder. You know, it's uh, you know, it's definitely gonna take a, a, a while for the the census to kind of reflect, you know, accurate numbers on this because uh, obviously we've graded you know so many books now at this point, uh, and uh, you know it, it's you know so but yeah, I think eventually. Well, it's, it's probably just like the, the key issues, you know, those those get graded first and the most. And so I think you'll see like the biggest, most famous uh, newsstands are going to, you know, we're going to get a lot of those in. And uh, but I think I'm excited about like the uh, ancillary stuff because, um, you know, when we were doing our research, we, we researched like all the companies across the board through the 80s and 90s and in the 2000s. And so we were finding all these little interesting, you know, pockets of information about, you know, these different companies. And so I feel like we're we're looking into areas that probably I don't know haven't really been tapped that hard for this kind of thing, you know. And some of the some of these companies, you know, a lot of people might not care about as much, but the fact that it's you know there's a rarity in there that yeah. kind of fits with this this different narrative about a newsstand uh, could actually draw some attention to it. So I'm excited about that too to see what's really out there. And of course, I love data, so I'm really excited to see ultimately you know how rare these things are. I like the history that it comes along with it also like you know when you when you look at uh, a lot of uh how they how they did things uh, back then um you know with the date stamps and the different types of like you're like you're saying all the different types of things that that change change all that up it, it's the history of it and and i think that's the most important thing you know we were talking the other day on the show about mark jewelers and you know, every once in a while, you'll you'll get those books that, you know, you'll see half of that star on that cover. And, you know, it's like instantly, OK, time, let's take a look in here, you know, and, and a lot of people don't know this stuff. And now they're going to they're going to be able to, you know, people are going to be able to tell them about it. But also, is this type of stuff also in the guide to grading? Like, are you going to be talking about that type of stuff in the guide to grading? Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a chapter on um, inserts uh in different editions different formats uh different uh variants uh reprints foreign editions um those are those are the chapters that come after grading so like you know first there's like the history and then the relationship uh between communist defects and enhancement then you get into the cgc classifications the labels and the scales then you get into how to grade a book and then finally you get into like the ancillary stuff about grading which would be like your your reprints and your variants and your dish all your editions and formats and things like that so yeah, it'll it'll go into your Mark Jewelers inserts. I mean, it's not you know. There's that's the thing is that you know there, what we're talking about and fifty other things. There's books that can be written about the chapters in the book. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's you, books upon books upon books about you just write about inserts alone or you know foreign editions. My God, you know, or or you know pressing or restoration or pedigrees. Uh, you know, what I mean, <laughs> which is coming. That's that's the next one. That's coming next. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, now that this is off my plate, I'm ready for that. And <laughs> <laughs> everyone's going to be like, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> you know, um, but, uh, yeah, so it's, it, there's, it, there's, I touch on things, you know, some things, the, the book goes deeper, um, the more relevant it is to grading, but, you know, things like, yeah, the Mark Jewelers, it's like, you know, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's in there, but, you know, I, everything's in there to some degree, but it may not be as expansive, you know, like, like, uh, like, uh, price variance. You know, I mean, there's been like volumes written about price variance online. Yeah. And so in that regard, it's like I almost I, you know, I can't remember if I actually referenced, you know, websites, but just, you know, if you want to learn about price variance, you know, here's a little, you know, just go online and you could just immerse yourself in so much information about that kind of thing. And so I, I think, you know, that, yeah, there there's areas that that are certainly covered in a lot of areas that need to be covered. So, um, you know, yeah, I'm sure time will bring that. Um you you brought up the census earlier and we we get a lot of questions and talk about the census and i think that the census is probably one of the most important things um about cgc in my opinion is, is being able to have that and curate it what's going on with the census right now what do you think the accuracy of your guys's census is 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 it is it something that you guys are are constantly keeping up on and keeping an eye on it um, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, we, we are due for an overhaul big time. Um, and it's coming. Um, it, it's not something that is a gradual change. It's kind of like a lot of components, I guess, of our, of our, our website is that it's, you know, it's this or something that is, is, is big as like the census that's tied to the database, um, or the registry sets, you know, like changes, um, usually happen all at once in a big way. And so for the census, we've been, I think we met a few months ago about, 
some basically just redoing it, just revisiting it and restructuring it and and listing things that we don't normally list uh, that obviously have become relevant or, or are relevant. Um, so, for instance, a book. Now we're going to break out like the SIG series information, break out pedigrees, break out newsstands, break out, you know, all these things that are, are within a book. You know, the I think um, restoration, something more more about that. Yeah, there was all these ideas. Uh, um, and so the way it's going to be laid out is going to be different. So it's definitely going to give people more of a, um, uh, a a better view of the information we have in our database because what we have is tremendous. You know, I mean, five million books, and it's like we're sitting on a treasure trove of information. And so now, what what we've been putting our, our uh, focus on the past year is how to to uh, to uh, take that information and you know put it to good use out there to where people can you know really you know just digest it and you know get a lot more out of it. So. Um, that's what we've been working on pushing. So yeah, the, the, um, the, uh, census is certainly, and the registry sets as well. And a lot of other ideas. There's, there's one, <laughs> there's another one I'm excited. It's coming out in December that that's about what we're talking about. That's basically, you know, going to be, a, a create a better user experience for CDC uh, members with the information that we have, uh, access. Well, to. well, speaking of that, another thing that it goes along those lines, um, you know, and, and the user experience and, and, you know, this data, like you said, you love the data and, and um, the majority of comic collectors out there love data too. They love pouring over the data. They love knowing that uh, they can input their data, um, stuff like that. You know, you said these online places, but another thing that, that they talk about a lot, that we get a lot of questions and talk about is uh, graders notes on books. Um, what, what, are, what's going on, uh, with the, with the whole thing going on with graders notes and, and how we, you know, uh, we look at them, you know, is there a chance for them to, to be on all, to have greater notes for every book that's graded and then that be online at the same time? Is that something that, that, that can happen here in the future? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, things really changed, uh, in that this past year, it really was interesting um, how things like change and change with the with the graders notes. But the end of it is that I realize that people want more notes. And that's something that I want to I want to do uh, is to implement in the grading room is to, is to put more notes. And that's something that I think, you know, hopefully we'll be seeing at some point in the future, um, because, you know, prior to that, um, you know, you go back to the beginning, there were no, nothing. No notes were available. Right. And then uh, they were handwritten among the graders and it was just a way to convey information between them. And I mean, that's usually how it is in other verticals, other uh, collectibles. You know, they don't have greater notes like comics do. And so it, it became, you know, it became a thing. People wanted notes. And so eventually they started to they then, then it was CGC. Uh, 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 what's it called? Put it into a format instead of free form. It was like choosing things. And then uh, and then eventually started selling notes. And so, you know, and then. Uh, and then all of a sudden now we're at this juncture this past year where, you know, uh, it was like kind of free and then we took stuff off the label and everybody lost their mind. And then we made them totally free. And now we got the QR codes. Now we've like opened the floodgates and now all the notes are out there all, you know, and so it, it's become a thing where it, it went from being an internal, you know, for internal use to now an expectation that, that really took you know, over time developed into that. And so, you know, we recognize that now. And so, yeah, I, I re you know, people want to have notes um, and I like to give them more notes. So, uh, you know, it's certainly something in particular in the high grades where you can see the defects. It's not, you know, to a greater, 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 it's not as, um, you know, they could see it, you know, usually notes that are more, you know, like hidden defects, more serious defects are pertinent to the, uh, to the notes. So, but, you know, I, I, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, you know, we'll certainly uh, and work on getting more notes out to people now that they yeah. uh, obviously it's it's so accessible and people. Oh, want it, so. it's amazing how accessible things are now with the ability to attach data to, say, like a QR code or, you know, the way that everything's working with the blockchain and everything like that. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so real quick, I want to uh, shout out to Cal L. Thank you, Cal L, for the $50 super chat. He says, much love, you guys. I always look forward to these shows. Well, we always look forward to doing them for you. Um, we appreciate you guys, especially you guys that come hang out with us live. Um, we're going to we're, we're keeping our eyes on the live chat to, to bring you guys mm -hmm. in. And also, I want to bring in another one of our esteemed co-hosts. We got Richie here from Popcorn Culture. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Right. How you doing, Matt? Nice to meet you. Hey, nice to meet you. All right. Big fan. Um, 
Thanks. We we you know we talked about the the uh, you, you shortly you or a little bit ago we talked about the foreign side of collecting and 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 gr- now that CGC has become this like uh, a place for the the foreign collectors like it's another tool in the foreign collectors belt right and you guys we we had you on a, a couple uh, months back talking about what's coming you know to an end here shortly and 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 it's we're gonna have to talk about it more with josh one of these nights and that is the foreign big huge foreign uh, auction through heritage you have uh, probably had an influx of foreign grading like you never had before over the last couple of months i would imagine yeah yeah an influx for sure i mean i it's not a wave i wouldn't call it a you know it wasn't like this giant cascade of foreign comics that poured down upon our heads <laughs> you know yeah. i think they're i think they're really tough to find you know i and i think um there's a lot of factors that go into you know collecting foreigns that is different from regular comics and uh but no we've certainly seen an uptick um i in particular uh uh anime um and uh and also the the uh brazilian the golden age a lot of those um not a lot not a lot sorry not a lot but (laughs) (laughs) compared to what i expected to see how rare they are um, we've seen po- pockets have come in, you know, like chunks. And so that's been a pleasure. And, um, and, uh, I got to speak with, uh, a kamikaze, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, that was, that was so much, you know, it was so much fun to, to hear, uh, his take on, um, you know, their, you know, collecting those books and, and, and really just brilliant Brazilian books in general, which sound to be, you know, extremely expansive, you know, way more than, than I can even, you know, probably realize at this point. Um, you know, so that was, you know, so it's, it's nice to see, uh, the doors all kind of opening up and you're starting to see, you know, become, you know, involved, more involved with the community and, and really see what's out there. And, um, you know, but yeah, it's, it's been, uh, it's, uh, yeah. And, and of course, you know, we, in the office, we still geek, you know, they, you know, the yeah. that's coming in all the time and it's like, look at this version. It's like, oh my God, I think there was the other day we saw a, a Korean, South Korean version of Spidey 300, which I'd never seen before. Um, I, I I had never seen that before either. Honestly, I um, that whole picture came about because one of our buddies, Phil, was actually just in Korea, and he uh, he was at a comic shop in Korea, and the he person, found that the person that was in oh, the okay. store had that graded a graded copy of it, and wow. he sent me a picture, and I was like, I didn't even know this existed. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. That was, that was so cool. So yeah. So that's been, that's been a blast. Um, I will say, do you know what strikes me as like the, t- the ones, the toughest ones to find and grade are the, the, the Mexican editions. Um, the Marvels like from the sixties, those are tough. Those are really tough. Um, they, you know, cause I, we get, we get a sixties and seventies, we get, you know, a good number of like German and Italian and uh, but the, the the Mexican versions are very usually lower grade with lower page quality and um, like really lower grade. And so, yeah, that's that strikes me as being, you know, and then I saw that FF5 that sold at Heritage. What was it? Eight oh and it sold for how much did it sell for? It was it was a 10 grand, right? Was it 10 yeah, grand? with 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 the buyer premium, it was like just over 10 grand. Crazy. I uh, you know it's good. Like, really? I mean, is that the highest? Yeah, it's great. I mean, to me, I think that was a deal because mm-hmm. I mean, who knows how many high grade FF five you know Mexican editions are out there? I mean, who knows? It could be mm-hmm. that could be like the highest graded one, you know. So um with room yeah, to so grow it's, too, with room to grow too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, tons, yeah. yeah tons of room to grow. You know? Yeah, so, that's something that we we were kind of talking about, you know, earlier in the week, and the fact that you know. Uh, Josh was saying like the the rarity of resources in some of those those countries where these comic books are coming from like just just having the ability to print something on paper that's a comic book is pretty rare and then for it to survive the quality of some of that paper wasn't the greatest and like you said especially those Mexican like the La Prensa and uh yeah. What what's the other Mexican ones Josh uh, uh, there there's Navarro Ian, Navarro, Navarro. Yeah, Navarro. Yeah, yeah, but like the La Prensas, those are like, I mean, those are like newspaper, man. Those yeah. are so yeah. thin. Yeah, yeah. And the, and the and the climate too. And this goes for the Brazilian books. Yeah, being so close to the equator, I guess you got you know higher heat. I'm assuming higher humidity in some areas. And so 
yeah, degradation happens faster. And a lot of the Brazilian books had the staples taken out. And, and I was told that that's a common thing where, mm -hmm. you know, there was these preservation attempts early on, like taping the spines and taking the staples out. Uh, and sure enough, I've seen, you know, an abnormally high percentage of, of issues that have staples taken out, which, you know, usually you don't see that in the grading room. And there's like well, let's, let's talk about that because, you know, now that you've had this, not like, again, not a huge influx, but you've had an influx of these foreign books coming in over the past, you know, year, a couple of years or so, I'd imagine. Um, has, has your thoughts on, on, or has CGC's thoughts on how to grade these books changed uh, uh, to a large extent or, or and, at all over these, you know, seeing all these more copies of these books? Not really. No, I think um, they are different, a little different, but not different enough that I feel like we have to grade differently. Um, it's subtle. It's like the difference between grading a comic versus a square bound versus a cardboard cover, you know, or a golden age versus a modern. You know, there's 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 already enough uh, differences among books that we've experienced that these you just kind of fit them in. And, you know, they're this kind of usually the same size. Uh, and they have the same defects, stress lines and bends and tears and all that stuff and repair. Um, and the, the page quality is different, you know, but again, it's based on color. So it's like, all right, it feels different. It's thicker or it's thinner or whatever. It has a different tint, but it still looks like off white to white. Um, you know, and so generally speaking, the, the, the standards don't really change. Um, so, for example, like you were talking about the staples and how a lot of the books had, you know, from Brazil had their staples taken out. Mm -hmm. Do you... Do you, as as you know, CGC? Do you say, okay, it, that's a normal thing to happen in Brazil. We're not gonna we're not gonna take away from that because that's a normal thing. Right. That's a good question. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. We wouldn't. We would not make an exception to that. Um, Which is important. I'm glad you're saying that. I think that's yeah. very important. Oh yeah. I mean, look, consistency. You know, is definitely very important in our grading standards. Um, deviation from that uh is is uh not you know it, it not not always a good thing yeah. and so no yeah something like you know look if it was made this way then you know this you know if the staples are taken out at some point in the future um then uh then yeah i mean they, they're taking out why they were taken out really doesn't matter um, we yeah, we going. kind of hit on this uh last interview but i want to hit on it again just so people that are watching that maybe didn't see that understand this like it's important I think it's very important for CGC to keep those standards across all things. And that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, it, th those, those foreign books that are 6.0s, you know, are, are any less, uh, you know, like there's, there's something wrong with them. It just makes 6.0s and 7.0s tough to get compared to you know the 9.8s does that make sense to kind of what i'm saying like you keep yeah. that standard uh P psa does it if there's no tens of a card like out there it, that's just the way it is that means that means that makes it rare to ever see that oh, card yeah. if there's no 9.8 of that out there that's that's important it just makes it more rare mm -hmm. there's no reason to change your scale on how you're grading these but i hear yeah. that a lot from foreign collectors like we there should be a scale change on how we grade sliding them. scale yeah yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. interesting um no it doesn't yeah to me it's got to be i mean era to era uh, sure the subtle change differences in how you grade you know golden versus silver versus modern because of the printing process and all that but but you know the uh, a book that uh like you're saying the, the example with the staples because they're in brazil and the state no yeah that i they wouldn't uh they would be, yeah, they'd be graded the same. Yeah, six O is a six O. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's definitely important to keep toe that line with that grade, and make sure that it's, it's the same across the board. Hey, look, if there's some books that only there's a four O is the high. I mean, some of the Golden Age books. Uh, I mean, what like uh, Superman one uh, All American? Well, no, no, I mean, it's just a hot. There's a high grade All American. There's some. What is? Uh, let me try to think. Some of the ones that there's. Uh, there's only one or zero high grade copy. Well, All American 16, I think, what's the like nine? There's the nine four mile high, and then I think the next highest uh -huh. is like an eight zero or something. You know? Well, um, I mean, we there, there's amazing stuff that's happening with that in the foreign community, where like there's these certain books that are, you know, you you're never gonna you're not gonna find a copy out there higher graded than a, you know, a nine zero um, for the longest it's, time. Yeah. And it's too that, early to tell. Way too early to tell. You know, because yeah. like, it's like I they don't. We're not going to know until they get graded. And I think, 
you know, I think the heritage auction is going to be really interesting because, you know, as history shown, uh, you know, the, you know, if, if when, you know, when things blow up at auction is usually when, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. CGC open and we were grading or they were grading books for a while, but it wasn't until the Greg Manning auctions when, you know, the prices did really well and all of a sudden everybody's like, well, we get my stuff slabbed out. <laughs> yeah. Everything, everything comes out of the woodwork. That right. You never right. Thought you'd yeah. see. Chase some of the, yeah. some of the questions that we got, Josh, uh, talked about registry sets. What were some of the, so the questions for that, for that reg the registry set stuff? So I know, uh, I know a collector in the foreign scene who is, he just did a registry set for his Spider-Man one. And he said that he had heard that there might be uh, changes might be coming to how points are awarded to the foreign books. I don't know if you've heard anything about that. Yeah, um, not that specifically, but in more in, in more general sense, how a lot of books are being scored because there's there's new stuff that's you know now we've got newsstands, you know, foreign books, you know, so there, there's there's we have to address or readdress you know, scoring, you know, with those books or address those books, but readdress scoring in general. And so, because, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we, again, you know, like the census, the registry, something else that we've been looking at very closely and realizing that there's a lot of potential there um, to really blow it up into something, you know, bigger than it is. And so, uh, you know, obviously this, the scoring is, is a critical component of that. And we have these new things now that we've introduced this year and so we kind of have to, you know, get get that, get a plan put in place with how we're going to, you know, uh, work all that scoring. But again, I can see it being kind of like, uh, you know, and I shouldn't speak out of turn because actually I'm less involved with the with the uh, registry sets. Um, but they certainly have some really talented people that I think they I think they've been working on a lot of new sets that they've released. I don't know if they've released them recently, but um, getting more creative with. Uh, cool. I think the kind of sets that people can build for scoring, because, you know, it's like the traditional, oh, you know, one through 300 or one through 100 or whatever, you know, but I, I think something like, you know, a uh, certain, uh, a run of certain covers or certain, you know, uh, or 35 cent variant set, which yes. we have or something, you know, just getting, you know, kind of like, you know, yeah, grouping them in different ways that may cross titles and cross companies. Moon moon covers, skull covers. Yeah. It's it's endless. And that, that's the beautiful thing about, you know, like in like in uh you know coins that you know registry sets are a big thing. And you know, but it's all based on like error editions and you know, sets and, and all this stuff. And I think comics we have that added uh level of um the art and you know all the characters and the wild motifs and covers and colors. And so I think you know, it creates, a, you know, there's a lot of layers to interest in, in comic books. And so, yeah, you can tap that with the, with the registry sets and really, you know, hone in on, because everybody's got niche, they're all niche collecting, you know, and so yes. it's like, yeah, just target Is that. there, one of the things that you guys have uh, done lately with the um, labels is putting, you know, like having the Spider-Man labels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Two questions about that. One on the foreign side, is there ever any thoughts or talk about maybe including flags of the country? <laughs> Yeah, I, did this come up here, or am I thinking of some other conversation? Because I, I, flags I think it came up before. I think it came up here. Did it? Last okay. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a anything is possible. It's not. It certainly has not been uh, anything that I've thought about recently. But you know, I down. You know, sure. Po you know, possibly. I'm trying to yeah. think. So, so we would have. Basically, it's like it's it's almost like a. Custom label for mm -hmm. for comics. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I that'd mean, be just, awesome. That cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, that's a great idea. Like, there's like ten or twenty other ideas that it's like it's. I put it in the bucket. Like, okay, let's just get like everything under control here at the office. Like, get turn times under control. Get everything under control, and then and then you know once we kind of come out of this crazy you know rocket ship that we're on. Then it's like, okay, all right, now let's go over to the bucket and be like, okay, what, you know, what, what here can we, oh, this is great. Let's do this, do that. You know, and, you know, there's, there's all kind of nine, nine pre screens and, you know, all, there's all, all kind of interesting ideas in there. Um, you know, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it will put that one in the bucket. Maybe it's something we can do at some point. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it would be really cool to, you know, just do it like the same thing, like have an upcharge for the label and, you know, either just put like a, a flag 
somewhere on the label or even doing the whole label, whole label. like as you know the flag yeah. like i think that would be i think that would be something really special yeah. for those yeah. i i i can't i can't grade any deadpool book without that deadpool label like nine <laughs> nine, nine please that is yeah. like great label <laughs> i mean i really i resub my uh a couple of new mutants and i just so i could have them all with that that thing i wish uh we would do a lot more with that because I think, I think that's the, that's a niche that if mm-hmm. you're going to resell, I've, I've, I've seen that like the miles, the, the Spidey, the great looking uh, New York city in the background, like they always uh, command more of a, of a value on the secondary market. I mean, yeah. yeah I agree. What about yeah. star Wars? Is there any talk about maybe Ooh, doing that yeah. for star Wars? Like the labels? Yeah, um, I don't know. That's a Britney question. Give us a Darth yeah. Vader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. She's she she and a group. Um, they spearhead the, the 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 custom labels, and they know it's coming. Um, so yes, that would be more of a great question. I, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure. It'd be Let's great. Fight. It'd be great. That's for sure. Um, yeah, as much as we can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Make it. Make them all better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We talked about satellite uh, offices last time you were on, and, mm. and there was, you know, talk about, yeah, we really, you, you said you guys wanted, really wanted to look in that. Um, any updates on satellite offices in the U.S. Or, or, and any talk about maybe satellite offices outside of the country? There's talk of it. Yeah, there's talk of it. Yeah, we're thinking, we're thinking global. You know, I mean, we're, it's, uh, you know, um, it is, yeah, we're all, all options are on the table global you know satellite offices of going out uh, you know into other uh countries going abroad um there's a lot of ideas that are being banned about right now ai ai is another one that's uh that's really a, on the yeah. table very yeah, so. very big big question a lot of people have been asking about that is the ai stuff um which yep. Is, yep. is is amazing with what they're doing on the on the card side you know you have all these card companies showing up but the, the problem that I've always seen on the AI side for comics is it's it's a little bit more complicated. You know, you can't yeah. just flip it over. You can't just put it on the thing, you know. Um, yeah. But it's yeah. AI, AI can help in a lot of different ways. Grading is one of them, uh, which is what we're, we're talking about. But but there's you know, there's just in terms of the whole process, you think of grading. But really, it's like opening the mail, receiving verification, grading. Uh, encapsulation, quality control, shipping, you know, customer service. Audit. So, you know, all of those you know, AI can help in so many different ways, but specifically to grading, you're, you're right. I mean, it's not, it's not, I don't even know if they could do it with coins and cards, you know, two-sided things, but they certainly could get a lot closer to the right answer. And I think that's really, you know, what we're talking about is like AI grading and, and no, you can't, when you have, you know, obviously a comic, um, it's size, all, obviously all the stuff on the inside that I can't see the spine. Um, there's, you know, there's things that you can only see when you tilt the book in a light that you can't see in the picture. So AI can, is not going to get us as close to the right answer as, as it would for probably a coin. Um, and, and also too, you know, coins have got, uh, you know, there, there's, there's, there's the differences, the differences are so subtle and there's like millions and millions and millions of like scans of coins out there. And so, you can you can really you know build AI around that I think more successfully with comic I could see it be more of an identification tool um, grading could spit out a suggestion but no ultimately at the end of the day I mean we're going to need graders you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, looking at the books you're know, holding the books feeling them you know yes smelling them yeah uh, <laughs> hell yeah hell yeah you know I mean there's nothing will ever you know ever ever replace that so. But it, but it's going to help in a lot of other areas. I, think. I, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen like a grader's note like smells like shit. You know what I mean? Like smells bad, <laughs> smoke. Uh, the person who owned this smoked a lot. Like I, I, I don't know if like I've ever seen that. Have you guys ever put those notations in their musty smell or something like that? We we have a we have a note in our in our system called odor. Um, okay. Okay. Rarely, rarely, rarely use it. Rarely, I, I probably have seen the graders throw one on there every once, you know, a couple of times. 
Now we will make you know comments to each other either verbally or in our private notes. <laughs> you know, Yo, this which, stinks. Woo. You guys, yeah, you'll never see our private notes. Oh my know. god, <laughs> <laughs> I could in- just see it. Matt said your book smells like shit, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> see, yeah, you gotta we- be. You- you got to be careful with some of those foreign books too, man. Some of those oh, things yeah. can get a little funky smelling. Oh yeah. Oh we, yeah, we, I mean, the smell is certain. Look, I love smelling books. You know, uh, I know some of us don't. I asked the people, we did that, uh, that uh, the, the Academy uh, over the summer and we had hundred people in there and I asked people to raise their hand. If they like smelling their books and most of them did raise their hand. Smell that. <laughs> That's the smell of new comic books. <laughs> So I was I was glad to see that because I've been I've been uh, you know laughed at uh, you know, on more than one occasion for that. But but yeah, the you know we it doesn't affect grade. It is a defect in the grading guide. It, it, odor is a is in the grading is one of the defects. But it's technically you know we don't we, it, it's it's very useful in other ways. You you know obviously identif- identifying uh, you know cleaning paper uh, the pages have been clean pedigree identification. You know, a level of acidity. Actually, you can smell. You know, if a book's you know how it's been stored, malt, water malt, damage. You know, yeah. So I mean, there, there's you know, there's there's certain benefits to it, but it really doesn't. Ultimately, doesn't have any kind of effect on the grade. Um, you uh, have had a lot of. Uh, well, have you had a lot of new hires at CGC <laughs> for graders and, and stuff like that? Have you guys been hiring people over there because? Let's yeah. be honest, the turnaround times have been amazing as of late. Just absolutely awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have hired a number of people. Um, we but we've been doing it now for over the past, I guess, two years. Um, and really because it was COVID, you know, COVID hit. And I think we, we might have talked about this on a previous podcast, but it's like, you know, it, it went like this for about two months, and then it went like that, and then it really went like that. And so we, you know, we set about uh, quickly trying to get in front of that. So, you know, we, we hired, uh, you know, uh, a number of people, but we also developed like a, a training course, which we'd never had before because, um, you know, traditionally, you know, you just, you drop somebody in every once in a while, they just sit and they sit and they sit, you know, kind of like this. Um, uh, On the job training type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As like, it happens. Yeah. What's it called? Um, I can't think of the name, but yeah, the person just, uh, uh, um, it's on tip of my tongue. You're talking about yeah. when someone shadows someone. Yeah, yeah. With a with uh, uh, apprentice. Apprentice. That's it. Thank you. Yes, an apprentice. Yeah. So it's like a you know, uh, uh, yeah, you. an apprentice, and then they you know then it takes you you know and all that stuff. So the the trick is to find a way to to be able to accelerate the training without kind of losing any quality to it, and then also obviously you know uh, maintain that after the after the fact. And so, um, so that was kind of what we said about doing a couple of years ago. So, no, we actually, we, we added a number. I mean, it wasn't a huge number of people, but, you know, forecasting is a big thing in the company. So we're certainly looking ahead months and, and even, you know, a year to kind of see, you know, try and plan, you know, it's not like you just start throwing bodies at it. You know, I mean, it's very scientific, very calculated and, and, and very choosy about who we brought in. Um, but also the training was, was very immersive and in-depth. And then obviously, you know, and again, I think I've talked about this, how I run a thing where I analyze the graders every uh, every month, uh, their output, it, not not in terms of quantity, but the, the grades and how they match with each other and all that stuff. So so we have all these things in place to maintain consistency because, I mean, the truth is, you know, it's already hard enough, you know, with these books, they, 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 they're they almost like snowflakes. You know, I mean, they're, they're all subtle differences between one and the next, and you have to determine the grade on those. So, so there's, there's a lot of subjectivity to it. But on top of that, obviously, you've got an enormous number of books, and then you've got a growing number, uh, a growing team. And so consistency is always the thing you're chasing. It's always, always, always the hardest thing to chase. And, uh, and so that's just, that's just pretty much where I put a lot of my effort in the grading room is trying to maintain that consistency and even improve it, you know, any way possible. Um, and so that's, you know, that's certainly been the goal the past two years because so much stuff has been going through there that, you know, that's whenever you're, it's the most dangerous time that you want to really, you know, double your efforts trying to maintain that. Consistency. What, what is, let's talk about some of those daily day-to-day numbers and stuff like that. Like how many books do you grade a day at CGC? Do you think? I can't say, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> a lot, uh, thousands. <laughs> what, what can you say what the average time spent grading on a book for, for a grader is? Yeah, there really is no average. It depends on the book. Um, a high grade modern 
you know, that's like just came out is going to be a matter of seconds. I don't want to say five seconds, but not a minute. 30, you yeah. Know? You know, yeah, 30 cents, something like that, because you don't have to worry about restoration. You don't have to worry about, you know, all these de defects. To, there's so many things that are just off your plate, you know, with those things. And, uh, you know, as you move back, then you start your saddle with, you know, now we got like newsstands on modern books. And then you go back further and you've got, you know, restoration, uh, which is really prevalent on anything, but definitely more of the older stuff. Then you go even further back and now you've got like, missing parts and married parts and all kind of weird tape and strange, you know, it just gets really strange. So, you know, it's, it's, it, so it can be 30 seconds to, you know, we've spent 10 minutes, you know, I mean, I mean, three of us gathered around a, a book and I'm like, guys, you know, come on, <laughs> let's get back to work. You know, let's make a call on this and move on. You know, it's like, you know, we're fascinated by what we see. And so we're just trying to digest it and figure out and come to some common ground on it. So it, it really, but I mean, on average, you know, it's, it's, it, it's, you know, uh, seconds to minutes, you know, but I mean, it's it, people would probably be surprised at how quickly we can grade a book. I, I think uh, I see people laboring over uh, grading and, um, you know, I mean, it's just nature of the beast. If you if you go in there and you grade thousands and thousands and tens of thousands and eventually hundreds of thousands of books, then it, you, it is just it's like muscle memory. And you really when you're seeing because you, we see a lot of the same books over and over again. That's the other thing is that when you've seen hundreds and thousands of copies of a book. Uh, you, it just, you just know exactly where to look, what to look for, how you grade all the other copies, where this falls, what it is, boom, you got the grade, you know, and, and very quickly. Um, has, and, has there ever been a time, Matt, I'm sorry, Brian, has there, no, you're good. has there ever been a time, Matt, where like the, the book presented in a way where it offset, uh, a defect where like it matched up with a six, five, but there was no way in hell it was a six five. You had to give it a seven just because, yeah, let's seven. say, a, a giant size X Men. It, it was like white. The mm -hmm. the cover was it it it, it was a uh, the luster on it, it. It was just brilliant. And oh, yeah. is there ever a time where that would offset a, a defect and make it a seven, something like that? Yeah, Joe. That's actually an excellent question. Um, the aesthetics what role does aesthetics play in grading right. um because it's subtle and it's not as in your face as a structural defect like a tear or a piece missing or you know and or a big crease and the answer is yes um less so as the grade gets lower obviously it's definitely plays more right. of a role in the high grade um but absolutely there are books that are stunning uh aesthetically they're white they're like the the gloss full gloss the inks look like they were printed yesterday uh, silver staples. Um, and so, yeah, absolutely. In those cases, we will certainly from on the fence uh, with a grade, we'll go with a higher grade. Now, the, the thing though, is that it's, it's only going to carry it so far because we're still, we're still um, kind of anchored by the, the structural defect uh, and the effect that it has on grade, which we have, you know, charts and everything uh, in the grading room for. And so, you know, the, the guide will say, you know, this tear equals eight Oh, well, okay, you know, you might go eight five on it, and you know, if the book is like freaking amazing, you might go nine, but it's not going to be able to leap you to like a nine two or a nine four. Right. You know, there's yeah, it, it's aesthetics can only push it so far above that, but you know, and obviously that's where pedigrees are, are like a big factor because you know, pedigree the pedigree bump, you know, um, you know that when you have books that are exceptionally better than most of the other copies you've ever seen, then that is that aesthetics are certainly going to play a role in the grade of that book. Yeah. Um, one of the questions uh, that I want to hit on real quick, some then when we were talking about newsstand that was asked is, um, are you guys is, is, you know, we talk about newsstand history a lot and, and coming, especially on, uh, you know, with the, with the collectible market and the secondary market and how, how much of a, a price uh, newsstands command over direct. Um, but it, it's not a rarity thing, depending on the year it is, for example, a lot of people don't realize that newsstands kind of newsstands to directs the rarity of them kind of flipped in the eighties where one was more rare than the opposite. Is that something that uh, you talk about in the grading guide? And is that something that is going to be acknowledged by uh, CGC at any point for like labels and stuff? No, no, I think, you know, I mean, that, that's, that is, it, it happened, you know, the flip happened. We know that we can acknowledge that safely and, and it likely happened in the eighties. 
Now, to what extent it happened and, and how long it took and how far it went, we don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't think there's any, you know, enough mal uh, data points out there to really point to to say, um, you know, what's you know what's out there and what's not. Because I mean, the, the the problem is is that you know you've got the print run of newsstands. So let, let's go past the early the early '80s, obviously, where you know it's mostly newsstand. But if you get into like the late '80s, '90s, and beyond that, you know, there's the ones that were printed that were part of the print run that were newsstand. Then there was the ones that survived. Then there's the ones that's in what grade they survived in. And so you kind of have like three levels. And, you know, the, the attrition rate for any particular issue could be different because it just depends on how it was distributed, how many copies they printed. You know, luck of the draw, because, I mean, those things are probably mostly tossed. And so, you know, there, there, there could be situations where, you know, I think I, I read somewhere that like a store was still ordering uh, newsstands, like a comic store in the 80s. So or in newsstands because it was easier to get them or something, you know, and so you had, you know, that's just one example of a story that was cranking newsstands out. So um, or at least adding to its, you know, those books are going into the hands of collectors. And so Bad right there, you've got a chunk that are better preserved. They, they survive. Who knows? You know, I mean, so there's like who knows? You know, it, it was probably so messy in that transition during the 80s when the comic stores are coming up and the newsstands were starting to diminish in terms of the percentage of print run. Uh, you know, who knows? what survived and in what grade, you know, I mean, I think, um, you know, we'll tell first like Spidey 300 uh, will probably be one of the first ones that will, uh, you know, that we'll start to see data points on, but um, you know, but yeah, but, but as far as like the early ones, you know, the, the difference, I mean, like the, most of the early ones are new stands, right? I mean, yeah. you know, and so that's, what's interesting is that, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but there doesn't seem to really be as much of a push for like early, direct editions as and that's what the problem is like you would think that the way people think and i think that's just because people don't know that you know it wasn't until like 85 where the the direct the amount of direct editions to the amount of newsstands was about 50 50 right and and right. Uh, uh, to that point directs were more rare and any directs pre-19 you know 85 83 sh you know it, it should hold a, a little bit more of a price you know, you higher think, price point. You would yeah. think, yeah, you would think that I don't know, market uh, direct market from seventy nine would be like super rare. You would think, yes. Yeah. Um, well, so. it, it's very interesting because the social media and the secondary and third markets that are now happen um, are causing a lot of that those things to to be noticed, and people are ser out searching for them now. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how those play out. A um, couple another quick questions, uh, talking about uh, like. Um, and when somebody sends in a large order, say a 25 plus order, do their books stay together through the grading process? Like, will one grader grade an order? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. That's that's great information <laughs> right there. Yeah. And then, and then furthermore, if, if they send in two orders of 25, would the same grader get all 50 or different graders? <laughs> that's the other <laughs> question, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, yeah, an order will stay together. But beyond that, you know, it, it could go. It's luck of the luck of the draw. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, typically, I don't know. They, uh, you know, they could get broken up. They could stay the same. They, they could stay together. You know, there's so many, you know, yeah, it, it could go either way, but uh, um, yeah, certainly uh, with an, an invoice. Yeah. Uh, all right. So what, if, one of the things that um, kind of happened earlier this year is a, is another grading company ha had an issue. It's not necessarily an issue, but, but a mishaps where some a large amount of books were lost and, uh, one of the questions that we got a lot was, um, does CG, how does CGC deal with this? And does CGC, um, you know, have practices that, that they think, you know, uh, keep them that, that this doesn't happen as much as CGC or is like, how do you guys deal with, uh, losing books, um, people's lost books is, is, uh, I guess the way I'm, I'm trying to, to state this is, um, how do we deal with our screw ups? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, because that's what it is. It, let's be honest. It's human error. It, it's for the yeah. most part, it's human error. Yeah, that's yeah. why the AI part we talked about. That's why the quality with human error <clears throat> with AI, you know, can change and, and maybe catch some of those way before we even think to catch them. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it, yeah. We we that's always a concern for any grading company, in any collectible field that deals in certification is, you know, at any given time, you've got enormous number of people's 
uh, items on your property. So you have to keep them organized and obviously, you know, uh, in one place. So, you know, we certainly do that and try and do as good a job as we can of that. Um, you know, the, I mean, things were a little sticky this past year, you know, coming off the influx of, of submissions and obviously, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You know, the, you know, I think there's plenty of stuff online about QC and all that. Um, so, you know, we, we're getting through that. We've gotten through some of it. We're getting through other parts, you know, but we're you know, obviously we're going to come out of it sooner than later and, you know, we'll be stronger for it. So, um, you know, a lot of learning lessons through that. But, you know, we inevitably when you're dealing with a lot of stuff, obviously, I guess something goes missing. Some mishap takes place. Something gets damaged. Um, we'll always make right on it. We'll always, always, always make right on it. Um, the hard part, I think, is sometimes people want an, an explanation. Um Sometimes you just don't have one, you know, it's like we just can't find it or, you know, this, ha you know, this happened and, you know, the best we can do is just, you know, compensate you for it. Uh, and, you know, and just, you know, obviously work real hard to learn from that mistake and make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, sometimes there's just no, you know, uh, you know, it just it, it's like, yeah, why man. did you why did my book get lost? Well, we didn't mean to lose it, <laughs> you know, yeah. but I mean, you know, but luckily it's been I mean, we. You know, our biggest problem is what it never that we we could never find it. I mean, that does it probably has happened. I'm sure. The problem is we couldn't find it fast enough. That was the big problem. Like the past year was like, you know, going to find things. You know, was probably more of a big of an issue. But inevitably, I found 99 percent of the time it always turned up. You know, but it might be it, at the time it, it might have been like weeks and weeks and weeks before that happened. So that was the frustrating part. But you know, again, like all these other things, we're finally, you know, just you know, we've been you know balls of the wall for the past year. So I, I feel like, you know, in my gut, I feel like we're finally getting on top of things. You know, the turn times are looking great. We're still working on economy. Uh, that'll be we're burning that down right now. We're, we're starting to uh, to really, you know, throw a lot of weight at that. So, you know, I think we'll see across the board, you know, everything is going to be on time here sooner than later. So, you know, I feel like, yeah, after 2022, 2023 is looking like I said, like we were talking about earlier with all the other ideas in the, in the you know, the bucket over here. I think we're finally going to be able to start to spin that year really starting to kind of like spread our wings a little bit and do these things that we've been wanting to do that we've been talking about the past year. Um, the, uh, one of the, obviously the biggest question that we've been getting asked um, over the last couple of months is the whole ultimate fallout for debacle. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's been absolutely crazy, Matt, to watch uh, everything happen over this one incident. And I'll be honest, I feel like um, I'm not saying it's a good thing that, that, that it, it happened, but to me, I feel like it, I've seen results and, and changes that uh, and, and actions made by companies because of this incident that make me feel like it's, it's going to get better and that the industry is getting stronger by learning how to learning from these incidents. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and CGC was a major player for in a lot of people's eyes in this whole incident. And I don't know uh, how how true that is. I don't know, you know, you know. Some people always have their have their um, prejudices on, uh, you know, they could be a CBCS guy and they want to complain about CGC, this and that. But in, in all honesty, there was um, some some interesting things that happened, and CGC took some some major stances and, and some changes and stuff on that. And I kind of want to get into that a little bit. Um, how was that kind of how was that book presented to CGC? Um, <laughs> yeah. If I well, can ask that. Sure, sure. No, I, I, you know, I really, this is the first time I've got a chance to really talk about the story. It, it really blindsided me completely. Um, I, I think it blindsided Clayton as well uh, and his team. I think um, it started, in my mind, it started off pretty innocent. Um, we met at a show uh, early in the year. And he was really excited about this thing and he wanted to show me. And so he brings out the book and it's, it's the, it wasn't even the, no, yeah, it was the, it was the ultimate fallout, but also the ghostwriter as well. And he, and he shows this, this cover that he designed, this acetate cover. And he had, you know, done this, this artwork that with the overlay. And I was just like, this is so cool. This is really, really cool. And he's like, yeah, I've been working on it for a really long time. And I'm like, this is just, this is awesome. This is really good. And so I was just excited about, the creativity coming from, you know, uh, this, you know, Clayton Crane yeah. and, and, you know, having done this cool thing, you know, and so that's really how it started. And that really is all it was at the time. And then, you know, months passed. And I think that they had kind of moved forward with the idea of trying to like release it. And then they, uh, 
you know, the time came that they wanted to get some copies graded because they were going to release it at the show. And so, uh, you know, the, the copies came in they and it was the ones that we had seen, obviously, and graded them and sent them on their way. And that was it. That was it. That was that's all it was. Now, you know, the there really wasn't, you know, as far as the discussion with the blue label thing, we had, it was it was unprecedented to some degree. Now, we've had I want to say facilitators, distributors, publishers, whatever. We've had people send in all kind of stuff with like, you know, stuff glued to the cover or extra covers put on or, you know, the burnishing with the uh, the six years, which I think is really cool where they burn the, you know, the hmm. image into the cover. So we've seen all kind of crazy stuff over the years, you know, but this this was something new that in the, in art, the artist, the, the guy that, you know, done the book was like, you know, creating this whole nother cover. So, you know, it, 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 you know, for lack of a better word, it was just kind of like the innocence and just being a fan and being like, oh, this is so cool. And so, you know, we, I, you know, honestly, that was really kind of it. And then, so it goes to the show and it seemed like it was a perfect storm of like how it started with, you know, people in line and they didn't get their copies. And then they were complaining about that. And all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute, here's CGC and they're grading it this way. And then, you know, and then it was just was like all of a sudden then it involved like, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the influencers who were selling them, the people who bought them, uh, the, you know, obviously Clayton, us, the, you know, Marvel, like all of a sudden, like, it was like, like, you know, all these people were involved, it became this thing and it was just crazy and it completely just caught me completely off guard. And so, you know, I was trying to navigate through it because, you know, I kept holding on to the idea that this is a really cool thing. It but is. It, it, uh -huh. Not to interrupt you, but real quickly, it, it is a very cool thing, and I think the majority of us that thought saw the idea and, and and when we first saw it, we have to admit that the idea is a great idea. It really is a great idea, and I, I think I agree with you that it just it just kind of uh, turned into this perfect storm, like you're saying, of a whirlwind of of things. But the 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 idea itself is a good idea. It's a very good idea. Yeah, it was creative. Yeah. And, you know, and then, and then, you know, but then, you know, stepping into it with Marvel, it was a Marvel book. Marvel got involved and that really, that just added a lot of drama to it. Um, and, and then obviously our treatment of the grade, which, you know, I, I, I realized, you know, again, it's like what we were talking earlier about standards, CDC standards and deviating from them. And, you know, we had, uh, we, you know, we, we looked at this book differently, but then realized that maybe looking at it the same you know, was what, you know, that's what really people were saying is they want you to look at this book the same. And so, you know, there was a, that was, that was an adjustment that we, you know, but it was a learning lesson, you know, so, mm -hmm. and, and somebody posted here that about the, the 10 of the nine, nine. So we actually do grade them um, with, with like a double cover, it, it kind of like a, a, a mix. Like you, we, the acetate is part of the grade because obviously it's now the outer cover it's qualified, but it's now the outer cover. We're going to acknowledge that grade. And so, you know, those things are like, they're like perfect, you know, and so then you've got the book inside, which, you know, they were handpicked. And so, you know, they're, they're usually perfect or almost perfect. And so in there is where we kind of got the nine nines and the tens from. So, um, you know, it was kind of kind of like a double cover situation, but not really, you know, yeah. but again, this was, this was something that was new that we'd never seen before. And, you know, it, it was, it was tough to navigate through. And I think, um, you know, ultimately we did, you know, we qualified it. So I think, I think that was, you know, what a lot of people wanted. So we, we went with that, but I hope, I still like the idea, you know, I mean, there's, you know, I don't know. Um, that that's a whole nother segment is talking mm -hmm. about, you know, because the other thing is that we're just grading them. Like that's just our job. And, and, and this little thing was grading them and we had our, we had a thing with it. But if you think about it, like the artist, if, if in terms of their creativity, they can, they have control over the kind of cover they make, what they make it on the book, they choose to put it on how many copies they decide to print, what they decide to sell it for. You know, I mean, they have control literally over the whole entire creative process. You know, it's almost like their publisher and seller and, and, and artist all in one. And so it's a cool idea, but it's like, you know, it, it really just depends on them and what they decide to do with it, you know? So, so, you know, whatever happens in the future, it, you know, it'd be interesting to see if, you know, this idea, you know, carries forward with other people. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are like, I don't ever want to see another acid table. Like, oh, yeah. you know? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that, I think that the, the idea is such a good idea that we are going to see more uh, of those ideas. As a matter of fact, it's going to be built up, build upon, built upon and, and, you know, changed a little bit and made even better. And I'm okay with that. I think what a lot of people, there's, there's certain problems that a lot of people had um, that, that were very interesting with that whole thing. I think one 
is uh you know the that that really stood out to me was the fact that you kind of are learning the, the transparency part right what are the, one of the things that the majority of the people in this community that i've talked to that they really really want from people that they're spending money with is transparency right they want to know what is the print run on on books you know what uh, what is like we ask you? What is the grading process on, on this stuff? Um, how do you come up uh, come up with these with with these results and and this and that? And the transparency is so imp important. And then to be able to say, okay, did did Clayton take this book to to CGC? Right, like you said, because it's important that we know that the art it was the artist's idea. The artist came oh, yeah. up with that acetate, right? If it was another yeah. artist that did that acetate, it would feel so much different. Yeah, and the, the, the black flag, it was black flag, black flag, black flag. It was Clayton. You know, I mean, it was Clayton's idea. It was Clayton that executed it. I mean, it's it's the artist. It came from the artist. And that's why I was always like, who is this black flag? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's Clayton, you know, <laughs> it's Clayton's idea. It's his cover. He did this, you know, he's proud of it. And it, you know, blew up. it just blew up, you know. It just yeah. blew up. And so, you know, it, it, you know, it is what it is. But, you know, but the. Yeah, um, I it, it was it was certainly a an, a lesson, uh, an interesting lesson in a lot of things. Um, yeah, and you know the Mar you know Marvel and Clayton will you know we'll see you know what comes of that. But I mean I you know maybe nothing comes of it. Maybe there's more. Who knows? You know. Who knows? Well, the way that Marvel kind of came out and said, "Hey, you know, we hear you guys. Um, we." We we know we see that there's something that we need to change, um, and going forward, this is the change. You guys came out and made your statement, you know, saying, "Hey, this is what we're doing with this." That that was very important uh, from uh, the eyes of the collector. It's, it's so damn important. I don't. I I hope that other people and other companies and you know retailers and exclusive you know online online retailers you know see that and realize how important it is to to that for that transparency to be there but let's be honest the exclusive this retailer exclusive game that's happened has just blown up and uh it's very interesting to see how all these different companies are going to navigate that this is one of the, the changes that is coming up about because of that um it, is there one of the things that that people always ask about is uh getting being able to number books individually do you ever see and i'm just asking you this uh obviously this isn't something you know that that i don't think cgc you know is, is a big part of but is do you ever see that there's a there's going to be a point where we're going to be able to have these books get individual numbers um you know printed on these books uh from printers is that something that that you as a long time person in this industry can see happening because i feel like that's one of the biggest fights where we never get any uh yardage on right we always say we want this we always want this but we, it's always we always get thrown back uh the printers will never do it the printers will never do it it seems like such an easy thing to happen interesting so you're talking about like a serial number like on like on a on dollar bill mm -hmm. yes it's fascinating i love that idea I th i'm all for it yeah they, as long as we know what the last number is, so I mean, they printed. I think that was exactly, <laughs> exactly, right. I mean, I mean, yeah. one of the things that that's happened for years is is people will, you know, if the print runs small enough, they'll write write on it. You know, mm -hmm. hey, this this many copies of this, but it, it's gotten to the point where uh, you know a lot of the card companies are printing that number on there, and you know, with the blockchain technology and all this stuff, a QR mm -hmm. code, all that stuff. It's all traceable nowadays. It would help yeah. so much. It would. Oh yeah. You know. No, I'm a huge fan because I, 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 you know, I don't know. How, I mean, people realize this, but paper money, PMG, our other vertical that does uh, the paper money, they have unlike coins and unlike all the other ones. Every bill, or at least every bill, has a serial number, and so it blew my mind when I realized that. Even though it's so obvious, I'm like, they never have to worry about resubmissions because. They they've got they've already they know they've already graded it because it's the number that's in the system. It's recorded, you know. And so it's like if we knew that every single comic book was unique in that regard and we recorded that information as it came in, then it would be. Yeah, there would never be a concern about, you know, uh, copies getting switched or flipped or, you know, resubmit or whatever, you know, without the tag or something. It's um, yeah, that, I'm all for that. Um, but I you're, you're you don't think that they would uh, they would ever do that. 
it i i feel like it's something that when it it needs to happen i don't think that the big the big publishers are going to do it anytime soon i just don't see it happening i think that they're kind of set in their ways but a lot of these smaller publishers that allow um you know because dc and marvel don't really allow uh, these retailers to come in and do these online exclu- or these retailer exclusives uh, on short print runs, right? It's always a 3,000 print run, 3,000 to 4,000 print run. You have to do it this way. Where some of the smaller publishers, you know, not Marvel and, and, and not DC, will allow 250 print runs or 500 print runs. And when you're printing that, you know, smaller print run, you can go to these smaller printers. And a lot of these smaller printers will, will do that. But for some reason, a lot of these bigger printers, they just don't want any part of it, right? Changing, you're changing up uh, how the how the you know the pudding's being made, uh, and they, they don't yeah. want to do that. Yeah, and that's a, that was a similar issue, I think, with the quality of the of the printing process, the paper, and all that. You know, over the past several years, you know, they Marvel and DC, I, I, I forgot the the details, but basically, it was like you have this collector base and you have this certification company, and there's this thing out there that you're printing books and these people are buying them and they really want them to be in this grade or at least look this way. So can you stop doing this and this and this that are causing like, you know, ink lift and ripples and whatever, you know? And so I, I, I don't know if that got anywhere, but, um, but I remember that was kind of a discussion. I think that was being had years ago because yeah. um, it's, it's, it's similar. It's like, you know, they're, they're in the print, the print business, you know, they're like, they, you know, collectors is, is not, you know, that's not on their radar or wasn't, maybe it is more today. It should be. Um, and, you know, and, and it'd be great if they could, you know, uh, you know, work, work with that. And, you know, things like, like you were saying with the, the serial number and, and the, and the, and the quality of the printing and, and, you know, cause there's so many things you can do. I mean, they did the, um, I think like the mint, you know, we, the, uh, the, the mint is basically like, uh, you know, for coins uh, they do all the, you know, they, they've, they've kind of like over the years, uh, merge with the collector base and they do like, Oh yeah. That's the West point stuff. quarters, you know, yeah. they did that for the collector base. That's, that's super important, important. And I think that yeah. comics is now being, I feel like comics is starting to uh, be pushed more uh, by the, the collector's dollar than it is just the reader's dollar anymore. Right. I think the reader's yeah. dollar was a large, the largest amount. And now the collector's dollar is being that. Um, yeah. And how you I, spend your money says a lot. Yeah. About, about, you know what you what you think and what you want you know right i i you know one thing brian and and matt i i think you know if if you're buying a, a book from a, a retailer exclusive and they say there's only a thousand like i think that that's w- one of the biggest problems right now is uh, the trust and i wish like if if i had if i said i only have 500 of these books I wish I could get, uh, like if I was a retailer and I was coming out with my own exclusive, I wish I would be allowed to, uh, number one, number two, inside the book, real, uh, small and, and it be graded without it being, uh, taken off as far as a defect. Would that be considered? Oh, you mean like a grading curve for particular, uh, defects on a print run? No, 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 no. Like if, if, if I was a retailer and I printed 500 of, of an exclusive title, would I be allowed to write down the number inside the book so that you would know almost like a a signature verification? How about one step further than that? What about if we labeled, you sent us the 500 books and we labeled them one through 500. Exactly. Yeah. That, that would cure a lot. That would cure a lot. I think we are going to do that. There was something that came up. I, I can't. I can't share details partially because I can't remember. But <laughs> there was. There, there was some, this this very thing came up months ago with something, and I think it's happening. I think we're doing that. I think we're actually going to open that door. But you know, there's there's the the the, the custody, the, the the chain of custody, the rules. Yes. You have to follow with that because, like you're talking about, you got to like make sure that there's not more than that printed or, you know, uh, whatever was extra was destroyed or you, you, there's all these little things. This, and this is the kind of stuff that slows us down because, you know, we know that we've learned that once, if we pull a trigger on something, uh, we got We got to make sure we do as much homework as possible. And so, yeah, it's like all the things that could go wrong with this, 
Uh, and so, but no, I think, I think that's happening. I think that's, but it, it would, it would hold these, uh, retailers, uh, accountable for what they say, uh, is printed versus what is actually printed. Yeah. And they would have to, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't like, like, you know, it's seeing this is, this is part of the chain of custody. It's like, you know, if they print 500, then they would, they would have to send this, the all 500, like they couldn't, uh, you know, um, I don't know. Yeah. It, so, it, like, it, it's, it's if like, they, it, they only wanted two fifty, you would personally, your team would destroy the other two fifty, so that it could be uh, only two hundred and fifty. Yeah, you whatever they what want. Yeah, if they well, want like two hundred fifty nine eights. Then you know, we screen them and then destroy the rest, or you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, here's yeah. here's the interesting thing and and i think um one of the one of the things that you might be thinking of and, and we, we kind of we kind of talked about this i don't want to get too into it but it, it was you know the death of superman book and you know i think that uh, uh with big time collectibles we kind of talked about it and, and you didn't really you know know uh, much about it so i don't want to get too much into it you know because i i think that's the other important thing you guys like we want to give Matt the ability to do his homework on some of this stuff before he gives answers about it. He's not going to, he's not going to know about every little thing that happens. Like we talked about earlier with the, with the background, with the label pictures and stuff, you know, that's more of a Brittany thing, this and that. But what I do want to uh, hit on about that is the importance of CGC as how we look at CGC. And let's be honest, we look at CGC as this is one of the companies that we have deemed the people that we trust enough to say, if this is what it is, then this is what it is. Um, one of the thick questions that gets asked a lot is CGC staying out of the lane of getting involved in selling books that they grade. And with the uh, secondary market or, or, or the, the, these live selling apps and all this whatnot stuff, there's a lot of things that have been happening, you know, with, with uh you know cgc uh working with jim lee we saw this jim lee thing that happened and 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 the whatnot sales and and people got questions about that and and thank thank god uh you know that was all answered up by jack came on last week from whatnot and said no this is how it happened and it was and it was answered up but the question keeps coming along constantly like we don't want cgc to get involved in selling anything they grade Oh. And because we hold CGC to such a high standard. Right. And I want you to, to, to talk on that to let people know what what is going on in that and, and how CGC handles stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, specifically that I'm not the uh, the thing you had mentioned. I'm, I'm yeah. not I'm not really up on the up and, on the up and up on it. But no, we would never sell uh, stuff we grade. No, that just that that is the most counterintuitive thing to the to our foundation to you know the 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 core of our business is is uh is to be objective you know and grade other people's stuff <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> we can be objective you know i'm gonna be objective it's our stuff you know i mean that that yeah so i don't know like i said i'm not sure i i wish i knew more about that situation but yeah uh, and and we'll let you of course we're we, we we're, we're gonna let you you know look into that and stuff but Again, I wanted people to hear it from your mouth, right? That that's important, and I also, you know, you knowing, you know how how much we uh, respect what you do and what CGC does. We want you guys, we want you guys to keep that standard, and how important it is to keep that standard. And you oh, yeah. know that, and people need to know that you know that uh, is what yeah, I'm getting we, at. Yeah, we do. And 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 the hard part of the job, one of the hard parts, is that the landscape is changing rapidly um and it's for a lot of factors i think it's social media i think it's all an influx of new collectors i think it's it, it, the, the valuation going up is inviting a lot of people to come in and try to take advantage of that and i don't mean that in a bad way um so you know manipulation of books uh and so there's there's a whole new landscape that we're facing or the ground is moving kind of underneath our feet and so you know, we're faced with these new things that pop up from time to time. Uh, and so we have to navigate through them. And it's difficult because it's not as black and white as as it might seem sometimes. There's a lot of there's a lot of factors to consider. And so, you know, and, and being in, in our position, you know, at the forefront, uh, it, 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 we're you know, we get a lot of this stuff that comes to us, which I'm thrilled about. I love that we get all these these new ideas. People are coming in, you know, sometimes they come to us with a 
uh, sometimes we don't see until it shows up in the grading room. Um, but but we are definitely a focal point. And so it's our job to navigate through all these things that are that come our way or that come at us, uh, opportunities, challenges, problems, whatever it is, you know, because ultimately we have to maintain the customer's trust and maintain our standards. And so that's 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 the obviously the main goal here. And so we'll continue to do that. And, and you know, we'll uh, you know, I, I'm still even though I may look like I'm not paying attention to the world out there and things people say online. I do. I do read things. I read the message boards and I read Facebook and I read Instagram. You know, <laughs> you know, I see I see what people say. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do take it to heart, you know. So even though I'm not sitting there typing a response, <laughs> know that I'm listening. And if I'm not listening, someone's telling me. That, that know, was the other Red Hood that said all that shit. <laughs> oh, Robert, yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> well, ag again, you guys, and every to everybody watching, that's that's what's great about being able to have Matt on here and to and to talk about us about this stuff. It's it's very important for us. Um, let's let's talk about uh, a few good things before we let you get out of here. Uh, New York's uh, Comic Con in Baltimore coming up. Any plans for on-site grading? No, not this year. Um, I'm not sure about next year. Um, it is definitely something that is back on the table. Uh, COVID obviously sidelined everything. So that is something that is definitely on the table. I like to see it again. I just love, I think it's a chance for us to get out and go do some grading. Um, obviously, we, you know, turn times need to be under control for us to do that. But yeah, so that's a possibility for 20, 2023 and even 2024. The shows are going to be um something we're looking at a lot closer because again that landscape is changing um coming at not only coming coming out of covid but seeing the big shows and then this emergence of the smaller shows the reemergence uh from what it was many years ago where you've seen like these really cool you know like you got uh, new hampshire's got a great show and then uh you got domain's show out in, in uh, los angeles i hear there's one popping up in miami you've got the collector summit that was in up north, the uh, northwest, and then they're doing one in Dallas in November. You know, this is it's bringing the focal point back to the collector because the big, the bigger shows have gotten so big that we're kind of getting drowned out and 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 pushed out. And so, you know, that's something that we're keeping an eye on because you know, in, in conjunction with on-site grading and and satellite grading and all these other things, just you know, how can we reach the customer better, you know, with our services? And so that's something that we're definitely going to be looking at. So stay tuned for that. We'll see. Um magazine grading i've seen a ton of new magazines on the market uh we talked uh, last time about the magazine grading and, and new magazine grading cases how's that been going with the uh, magazine grading great very close to putting the new holder out very very close nice. don't have any idea what, but soon sooner than later i i, I you know i, can't, I don't even give a, a time I've, I've been bitten in the butt by time <laughs> giving time oh yeah it's, it's the only thing we can never get back man it yes. is so no, important yeah, I go to the office. I see the prototypes. I see it. Where I think we're, I think we're on the cusp of like ordering all the stuff. So yeah, it's great because it looks, it looks obviously very much like the comic holder, um, the labels and everything. So it's, it's going to be like a larger comic holder. So big step up on on that. So um, yeah, that that's coming. So. Pulp grading. What's what's uh, going on there? Chugging along just fine. Um, obviously, you know, I mentioned November. Here we are. What are we? October 1st. It's going to be later, a little bit later. I may keep pushing that back. But that's going, that's moving forward. Um, basically just, uh, yeah, just hammering out the, fine, the, yeah. the last details. I mean, part of it is, you know, the, really the big thing is is the uh, the focal point this year was the turn times and getting the, the normal part of the business, the quality control, the shipping, the billing, all that stuff, getting that under control. And so that was the main focus. And so, you know, we, we, I know you're probably going to ask about the other verticals, video games, VHS tapes, all that other stuff. That is all like, you know, pulps, like all of this stuff is like right at the, like we're finally, it's like right at the 11th hour. So we, you know, the, the getting the main stuff taken care of this year. And then obviously, you know, now we're turning our attention to getting those things out the door. So I think, you know, in the next short amount of time, you're going to be seeing those things drop, 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 drop. So, yeah, we'll be seeing a lot of stuff come out here in the next few months. Well, I know a ton of people are super excited for all those, especially uh, the video game grading. It was really, really exciting to see all those updates. And another thing that's been amazing lately is seeing all the – uh new graded trading cards um mm -hmm. how great the holder looks a lot of people are getting uh their big submissions back and they look gorgeous they look cool. 
Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, Clay. Very happy. Very, very happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, everybody, uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us again. Thank you to Matt. Do you guys have any uh, questions oh, that you want to ask him I, before he? I got one us? last thing. I got one last thing. Hold on, Josh. <laughs> no, you're good. So, Go ahead. like, so there's a lot of people that don't know how to archive their books, right? So, like, and store them, and like, what? Who would you say has the best? Uh, mylar polypropylene uh you know who's would you say e gerber or like oh <laughs> as, well, as far as and and i had even asked brian as much plastic as you guys probably recycle have you guys considered coming up with a, like a a five mil or something like that uh if you're not going to get it graded like you know this is another option to store your book you know and i don't know like it seems cumbersome but like there's some meat on the bone you know as far as as yeah. much plastic as you guys go through yeah no we uh i think we'll probably leave the bags and boards and milers to the the suppliers i think we'll we'll leave that to them yeah i mean it is it is certainly an interesting you it would certainly be something that it would be interesting to get into on our end but i think we should probably best to stick with our core business um and let who's them- the best well, I'm not gonna. I, I, I honestly, <laughs> honestly, I don't. I, I'm not gonna obviously say who's who. I think is the best, but I will say this: that Myler is Myler. Myler is good, but ultimately, it's the it's the storage conditions in which you mm-hmm. put your book. You can lay books on top of each other. Uh, you don't even need Mylers. It's all about the humidity, the light, the air, and the and the temperature. So you know, temperature, you know, mid seventies, low to mid seventies, humidity around fifty percent, no fluctuations. Very important. Uh, obviously, uh, as little air and as little light as possible. If you can, you know, adhere to that, it really, you know, what you store them in really doesn't matter because the books are going to, they're going to be fine. Now, obviously, like Myler and boards help, you know, the physical, you know, movement, you know, putting them in boxes and taking them in and out and stuff like that. But that's suppose their own dangers too. And so, you know, I mean, so there's purpose to all of that. But ultimately, I think, uh, you know, storage, storage, which is something that most people probably don't even think about. Nobody, you know, most collectors probably don't have a humidistat or even a temperature gauge in their house. You know, they just, but, but at least they're indoors, you know, we're past the point where they're in garages and attics and basements. Yes. And so, yes. so I think the preservation level is much, much higher, uh, than it used to be, you know, barring a mishap here and there. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, generally, yeah, you just, you'd hear to those and, you know, Myler from either co- all the companies is fine, you know, as long as it's Myler. <laughs> you know, polypropylene, ethylene, I, you know, sure, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know, I uh, just don't put them in a safe. Don't close yeah. the, the, air, the airtight safe with the the uh, the, the, the moisture builds up. That's yeah, great information. See. What yeah, about micro chamber cool. paper? Micro chamber paper, yeah, that no, that helps because there's the off gassing from the books, uh, the mm-hmm. pulp. Paper. Now, once you get into calendarized paper after, you know, once you get into the 2000s and obviously everything now is calendarized, the slick paper, you don't have the the, the acidity issue in paper anymore. It's been, uh, it's, it's, it's been, uh, you know, it doesn't have the, uh, what's it called? Um, the uh, Elasticity or the. No, the, uh, that, um, what am I trying to say? Uh, oxidation. Yeah. The, the oxidation process that paper went through where it went through this chemical process where paper's brown and they whiten it. This is back during pulp and throughout the 20th century. And then over time, it browns again. So it's really just returning to what it used to be. It's not actually, you know. And so, you know, that all that stuff is where you have all the acids in the book and all that stuff like that. And so that's where the chamber paper helps is that it kind of, kind of absorbs that off-gassing. Once you get past, you know, into the calendarized paper, uh, there's there's no there's no need yeah. for, for that because there's, there's really there's, the acidity level is nil at that point. Josh? All right, I have two quick questions for you, Matt. Yeah. Do you guys have any plans on ever making like a slab bigger than magazine size? Maybe uh. even just like a touch bit bigger. Like, so for example, I have I have this foreign book. So this is this is ASM two thirty eight. It's from the UK, but it's a touch bigger than like this will not fit in a magazine slab. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know exactly what you're talking about. I wish, I wish we were, we're not, we don't have plans on making one much bigger. Um, the next so, slide. So down. don't, don't send this in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I mean, we, you know, treasure editions, we, 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 that again, that's in the little, that's in the little bucket over here, mm-hmm. you know, treasure editions. Uh, I, I had ideas for that years ago on how to build a holder for that. 
that would obviously be too big for what you're talking yeah. about. But but pulps is the same problem with the bed sheets. There's some bed sheets that the early weird tales mm-hmm. are, are nine by twelve. Our holders like eight and a half by eleven or a little bit bigger. It's nine by twelve. So it's just like the, the weird tales are just a little bit too big. And and so I was already on that. I was like, can we make something a little bit bigger? But we couldn't because the, the fact of the matter is, even though weird tales are so among the most valuable pulps, they're also among the rarest. Mm-hmm. You know, and so we would we would drop an enormous amount of money on a mold. Well, yeah, plastic <laughs> is so expensive right now. Oh, horribly, and yeah, and that that's what we're facing in the other verticals is that supplies are just everything is just through the roof. It's horrible, you know. So yeah, that's another factor to consider. But yeah, it's like you, you just got to weigh the cost benefit. You know, I mean, if mm-hmm. I'm going to spend all this money on a, on, a, on a mold, how many you know impressions am I going to sell off of it? You know, so that that's uh, that's always the factor. So treasury editions. You know that that's that's a question. You know, it's like how many would we grade? Uh, you yeah. Know, who knows? You know, I mean, there's a, there's enough of them out there, but you know, is there enough the grade, the value wise, enough of a tipping point to where you get to a low enough grade that's worth grading that makes it worthwhile? So, um, you know, but again, you know, this is something that we might explore down the road. You know, when when there's time and 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 resources available mm-hmm. uh, to try new, th- you know, go and try these things we've been talking about. Then yeah, I mean, you know, it might t- something like that may come uh, to fruition. Oh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. And then my last question for you is what are you personally excited about for the next year for CGC for, you know, your guys ventures, you know, so, stuff that you can talk about. Like, yeah, the grading guide. <laughs> <laughs> no, first six, that, that, that six be... years worth of work, man. I'd be Dude, excited it. about getting that thing out too. I, yeah. I, it makes me yeah, happy yeah. To, that you are actually nervous how that will be received because it's your baby. It's your baby. Like I can only imagine how that felt to finally put your pen or pencil down and be like, it's done. Like, yeah, it's, 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 it it was, uh, you have to force yourself to do it. And, 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 and of course, you know, when I got my advanced copy, I opened it and I'm immediately like that, that night I go home and I'm going through it and immediately there's like five things I want to change, you know? So I'm like, I can just, uh, I can just imagine somebody calling, hey, my book is a 9-6. I've got the grader's guide in my hand right now. I want my grade changed. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But, but yeah, but it's, it's but it, it'll be a living document. So it'll be something that we'll continue to print and we'll make adjustments and maybe down the road, eventually even kind of like re, uh, redesign or something. You know, so oh, it'll, yeah. it'll be an ongoing thing. Oh, now, yeah. if I get you to sign mine, do I need a witness? Ha! You know what I mean? <laughs> Only if you get a six <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you more than you know. And uh, I would love to do this. You know, maybe we can figure out a way to do this quarterly, get you on here as much as we can. And I know you're super busy, but again, thank you so much. Well, no problem, Brian. It was it's awesome. Just, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was a pleasure having uh, being on with you guys. And uh, thanks for chatting with me. And, uh, I look forward to seeing everyone in New York next week. And uh, here's a 2023. Uh, I think that it's going to be pretty wild, another wild year. So, uh, yeah, we'll Amen. see you guys soon. All right. All everybody right. stop and say hello to him in New York. Go get your guys' uh, bo- your comic grading guides. Uh, and have yeah, sh- up, show man. Show the book again, Matt. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. So this is – oh, by the way, this this cover was by Ar- Arnie Sawyer. Arnie's actually done – he's done work with uh, Marvel and Diamond and CDC in the past. So he's he's a friend of mine as well, a big collector too, and so yeah, so he did a bang up job on the cover, uh, and uh, and then um, yeah, here's the back. It's just got more pictures of slabs, and again, it's like I wish I, I want to sit here and go through with it page by page with you for the next four hours. <laughs> and I just I can't. All I can do is flip on this the silly camera right here and just. Just well, I can't wait stuff. to get mine, man. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna be digging deep into them, man. So. Yeah, go get. It. Yeah, New York. If you can't get it there right after New York, order it online. We'll ship you a copy. And uh, can can you, know. you say the prices again, just for the people that might have just joined? Yeah, thirty bucks for soft, forty for hard. Um, and which is great <laughs> pricing. Great. That, 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 <laughs> seriously, that's that's great pricing. Yeah. For that book. Hey now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey now. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's killer pricing, and it's only an extra you, five. You said hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> hey now. Uh, hey now. <laughs> well, hey, thank you, Matt. Appreciate you. And uh, we'll be in touch. And I uh, can't wait to hear how New York goes, man. Great. Yeah, we'll follow up. So, all right, you guys, be safe. I'll talk to y'all soon. Yes. Later, man. Take okay. care, Matt.